Daniel Caustic presents Premiership Elections in Albertan History. This election took place on August 22, 1935, and was the eighth election in the province's history. It would come during the height of the Great Depression. Not long after the previous election, the United Farmers were faced with a large sum of crises. The Great Depression had caused the price of wheat to drop from $1.78 per bushel to 45 cents by the end of 1930, nearly driving the Alberta wheat pool to ruin. Premier Johnny Brownlee was hesitant to provide loan guarantees, and banks began denying credit to farmers. Things would only get worse in 1932 when the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation was officially founded. The CCF would enjoy support of UFA members, but were harshly repressed during a hunger march in Edmonton by the RCMP. Henry Wisewood would resign as president of the UFA and be replaced by Robert Gardiner, the MP for Acadia, in a leftist shift for the party. Gardiner openly criticized the government, stating that the approach being taken was only adding to the problem and passed party policy resolutions that called for nationalizing land and radio and cancelling interest payments until the price of agricultural products rebounded. Consequently, 1931 saw the first deficit of the Brownlee government. The deficit would only increase in the following years, and Brownlee was forced to make many cuts to government spending. This included abolishing the Alberta Provincial Police and closing agricultural colleges in the province. In 1931, during the early years of the Depression, William Aberhart, a radio evangelist and school teacher from Calgary, began speaking about the economic theories of social credit. Social credit was a theory founded by British engineer Clifford Douglas that derived from him noticing that the products workers would produce cost more than the workers could afford. It stated that purchasing power should be given back to the people via credits provided by the government, essentially an early form of universal basic income. Aberhart lobbied the Brownlee government to adopt these ideals, but Brownlee strongly rejected them. Afterwards, he led the founding of the Alberta Social Credit Party in 1934. Things would continue to get worse for Brownlee, as in 1934 he would become the subject of a high-profile sex scandal. Vivian McMillan, the daughter of Edson Mayor Alan McMillan, accused Brownlee of seduction and claimed the two had been engaged in an affair from 1930 until 1933. McMillan claimed that Brownlee had used his wife's ill health to guilt her into the affair. Brownlee, for his part, denied her claims, but the jury would come forth with a guilty verdict. In spite of the judge overturning the verdict, due to the overwhelming media sensations surrounding the trial, Johnny Brownlee was forced to resign as premier. The legal troubles would come to an end when the Supreme Court of Canada would reinstate the jury's verdict. Following Brownlee's resignation, the UFA named Richard Reed, Minister of Municipal Affairs, Lands and Mines, and Public Works, and MLA for Vermilion, as the new premier. He had to first deal with the scandal surrounding the divorce of Rand McPherson, former speaker and MLA for Littlebow, along with two of his MLAs crossing the floor to the Liberals. Continuing to preside over a poor economy and growing political extremism, Reed was unable to do much as Premier, although he did experiment with early forms of universal health insurance. Reed came from the centrist wing of the party and constantly found himself at odds with Gardner, who he described as far left. This contributed to alienating his base and internal party struggle. In 1932, John McDonald would resign as the leader of the Liberal party and be replaced by George Webster as interim leader. Webster would continue until the acclamation of William Housen, MLA for Edmonton, as party leader. Housen would add to the troubles of the UFA by exploiting their scandals and positioning himself as the next premier. Dominion Labour, once again having rebranded to Labour, had been faring very poorly during the Depression. Their close ties and overlapping platforms with the UFA led to their popularity declining over the previous term. Fred White would remain as leader. Since the rise of social credit, the Conservatives were also not doing well. David Dugan was still party leader, but the party was still unable able to expand into rural areas and began losing support in the major cities as well. During the campaign, Reed and the UFA were faced with criticism for their inability to amend the effects of the Depression. The rise of the popularity of social credit ideals also hurt the government, as their previous refusal to implement them caused a break with voters. The CCF would not run candidates in this election so as to not split votes with the UFA and Labour. And here are the results. William Aberhart won, securing 56 out of a possible 63 seats while securing 54.2% of the popular vote. Next came William Housen, whose Liberal Party won 5 seats and 23.1% of the popular vote, down 6 seats and 1.5% from 1930. Then came David Dugan, whose Conservatives won 2 seats along with 6.4% of the popular vote, down 4 seats and 8.4% since 1930. Next came Richard Reed, whose United Farmers won 0 seats along with 11% of the popular vote, down 39 seats and 28.4% since 1930. 
Finally came Fred White, whose Labour Party won zero seats and 1.7% of the popular vote, a decrease of four seats and 5.9% since 1930. The rise of social credit would bring to an end the second political dynasty in Alberta. It was also the first time in Alberta history where a right-wing party would form government. Having not expected to win, social credit had gone in with Aberhart as merely the de facto leader instead of the official one. Aberhart was later sworn in as premier and won a by-election in Calgary, taking his seat in the legislature. It was the most negative campaign in the province's history at the time, with sign vandalism and negative attack ads becoming commonplace. After the election, the Boston Herald ran the headline, Alberta Goes Crazy, and other papers reported similar stories. The UFA would retire from politics completely, and this would be the election with the highest voter turnout to this day at 80%. I'll see you in the next one.